since we are at the library, we have to respect the sound. So please, whenever you have a question, when it's your time, just raise your hand. And uh, like I said, welcome to our first, our informative meeting today. And uh, when you have a question, you'll be given one minute to ask a question because of the time difference and the amount of people. Okay? At this point in time, I want to give it over to you. Our representative from the city. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I first I'd like to introduce my team members and myself. My name is Ulises Gonzalez, senior city planner for the city, city planning of the city of San Luis. Um, we also have city planner Oliver Nedford, um, who will also be presenting, and city planning associate Gonzalez Enriquez. Um, so today we are here to talk about the Sereno Cemetery Corridor Rezoning Project. A project that really, and to, to in short or just to summarize, is currently a lot of these lots within the project boundary are all zoned public facilities. And the project is to rezone to match what's currently there. So if, if it's one house, we're going to allow one house so that people who live within that boundary are able to add a room or just get a, a, a just get a basic basic planning permit. Because right now, um, whatever is on the block, for example, it's not legal to have one house because it's only you're in a, in a public facility that allows like like libraries, or freeways. So we want to basically bring it back to um, the zoning of we want the zoning to match what's in, in within the property within the lot. So I'll hand it over to our team member. Hi everyone, um, thank you all for showing up tonight to learn more about this project. So um, to begin, we'll just give some history, which I'm sure, yes, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of this history. Um, but to begin, the state of California created a plan for the freeways within the state. And a part of that was the creation of the 710 freeway. Um, and now it's commonly known as the 710. And the extension of that freeway was supposed to go through um, the community of El Sereno, Pasadena, South Pasadena. Um, but in the recent years, and also due to a lot of uh, community um, involvement, to stop the freeway, the plans have been terminated. And so now the current zoning, which is for to allow for the freeway, um, it's no longer matches the existing neighborhood. So our project um, is proposing to redesignate and rezone these properties that were previously zoned as public facilities to match them to the existing neighborhood. Um, and we also are going to, as a part of our goals, incorporate the objectives from the 710 corridor El Sereno Neighborhood Vision Project. And um, one of the other project goals is that this would allow for more housing and affordable housing. And it would also provide for the continued use of public amenities such as the community garden and um, parks that already exist in the neighborhood and future parks. And throughout this process, we want to make sure that we engage with all of the community members. So thank you once again for joining us tonight. For some background information, and one of the maps that we have in the front is of the Northeast Los Angeles Community Plan Area. And so this project is within the Northeast Los Angeles Community Plan Area. Um, and what the map does is it identifies where certain land uses are. And land uses... Can I get... Uh, yeah. Land uses, um, they tell where certain uses are allowed. For example, residential, which are a lot of our homes, apartments. And then we have commercial, where a lot of our businesses are. And then we also have land uses such as public facilities and open space, which we see um, as different centers such as parks, like that. And each of the land uses has a corresponding zone. 
um, and we will get into more detail with how those relate later in this presentation. So in this next slide, you can see a side-by-side -side of the existing land use and zoning. Um, for the most part, a lot of the properties within this corridor are public facilities or PF zoned. And once again, this was for the creation of the freeway. Um, however, we are now proposing to update those properties. And here's a closer look just at the land use. Um, most of the green, which is towards the bottom, is PF or public facilities. And then up top towards um, the northern end is a lighter green, and that's for open space. And there are a few properties within the boundary that are already have a land use of low residential. And then moving into the existing zoning. So as you can see again, a lot of the properties are zoned for public facilities, and there are some properties that are already zoned for residential uses towards the north. So you're calling them public facilities because they're owned by Caltrans? Is that how that's designated? This, the PF doesn't determine if it's owned by Caltrans, but... Well, I know technically, but, but you know, normally if there's houses, there would be... Correct, zoned. it would be zoned for residential. Yeah. So the PF was for the anticipation of the freeway, but since the freeways no longer have any, mm -hmm. they're outdated zones. They don't reflect, like if there's a home there, it doesn't reflect that zone. So are they gonna rezone it back to residential, single family? Yes, so we'll, we'll go over what we're proposing, but the idea is to match the zoning with what's existing with the neighborhood. Um, which brings us to our next slide. A lot of the neighborhood um, already has single family homes, as I'm sure a lot of you know who live within this area. There are also some commercial uses along Huntington Boulevard. Um, and there are also some smaller multifamily apartments, such as duplexes, triplexes, um, and other smaller apartments. And then there's also community gardens and the public park that's towards um, off of Concord Avenue. And then here is a look at the land use, um, the existing land use and the proposed. So one of the main changes that you can see just visually from this map is on the left, what was previously green or PF has now, most of it changed to yellow, which signifies residential uses. And we will go over more details of what the proposed and zoning are. But here's, can I also see a copy of that? Excuse me. Just raise your hand and you know, I'll open it. I just need a copy of this. All right. And then this slide shows um, the existing and the proposed zoning. And these are once again side by side. And you can see here on the left, the existing shows a lot of green, which is for public facilities. And what we are proposing is to change um, a lot of those to residential and some commercial along Huntington um, up there. So that covers most of our existing and current conditions. I'll now pass it over to Oliver, and he's going to give a more in-depth look at what the proposed zoning is. Hello, Hello everyone. Thank you, uh, Oliver Neff from here. So city planning. I know the back actually there's a uh, um, newspaper cut out of the uh, 710 uh, freeway and citizens defeating them. So sort of apropos that we have it here. <coughs> um, so um, to um, some of the points that um, members of the community have already made, and like what Kasali was saying, what we're trying to do here is reestablish essentially the zoning that's appropriate for what exists on the property currently. Um, and so you'll see for the most part, um, in the middle area, how can I do it on the computer? Uh, middle area here. This is pretty much all PF. This is all PF zone currently for the freeway. These are all basically single family homes. So this will all become R1. That's the intention. R1 uh, single family. <coughs> um, as you move up into um, Huntington, um, closer to uh, you know, main thoroughfare, obviously you get a little bit more intense uses. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so along Keats, we sell some single family. Um, and so we're keeping Keats essentially single family um, street. Uh, Southbridge has a multi-family and also um, the Shelley uh, has a multi-family, so they would have a, an RV 1.5 zoning, 
is a zoning that allows for one unit for every 1,500 square feet of your lot area. <coughs> so for most part, you know, if you've got 5,000 square foot lot, you can put you know a triplex on that on that property. So you know, we're not talking apartment complexes; we're talking you know three, four unit type apartment uh, buildings. <coughs> um, and then as we move further north, um, all on Huntington. Um, one thing we want to point out is that the community garden um, we're maintaining as a PM zone. Um, that would allow for the community garden to maintain uh, maintain as is. Caltrans is sort of obligated to sell all their properties um, for residential purposes, and so they're sort of they want us to approve it as something else. Um, but it's a community garden, and that's what it will for <coughs> for the purpose of this action. Um, and then we have some uh, commercial zoning along Huntington Boulevard uh, on the north and south side. Um, as you move further up north, um, you'll get into some, uh, again, multifamily uh, zoning land uses. Uh, the most intense land uses are uh, actually already um, intense land uses. Um, if we were to go back into the slides, we don't have to, but if we were to go back into the slides, you would see that these properties up here are, weirdly enough, already both zone R3. Um, so they already have a density that's pretty significant. Um, and so we're not downzoning those properties. Those properties will maintain their R3 zone. Um, there's three or four properties that are above them um, that are have multi-family properties. We want to establish a distance and walk. Um, so it would be an R3 walk. Um, so that you'd have you know, multi-family along that, that will work. Um, there's also some funky zoning with this large parcel here. It's kind of R3 zone, but also about a third of the property is zone R1. Um, and so that's just uh, to unite that zone. Um, there's a small down zone that's occurring up here, but it's an R4 uh, going down to an R3. <coughs> um, and then lastly, one of the more recent changes that we've, um, we've had is that there's a open space um, land use designation. Um, and so, sort of bringing it back to my, this slide, uh, which is the land use designation. Uh, so up here we have existing OS, open space land use designation. And so we're actually just maintaining that parcel up there, which is the parcel of the of the vacant lot. It was identified in the survey um, in, the, in the neighborhood vision study um, to be a public park. And so we're actually rezoning that property to an OS zone. Um, so it's currently R1, but it's a vacant property. Caltrans owns it. Um, we're rezoning it to an open space so that hopefully we can get a park um, put in there. <coughs> Sorry if you but. defined it earlier, but could you tell us the differences between low residential yeah, yeah. and medium? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, low residential. So, low residential is the land use. It's a broad category. It establishes sort of the, the broad policies that the city wants. So low residential allows for these zones, these zones, RE, residential state, 9,000, RS, R1, those are other zones. And so if you establish a low residential land use, the only zones that you can pick from are these zones. So if we say it's low residential, you can't put it in an R3. You can't put it in a... Yeah. That still doesn't answer excuse my question. Excuse me, bro. Everybody hold their questions till later. Let the presentation go, and then we'll have questions after. So thank you. That's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Just clarify what is R1 and R3. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Um, so R1 is uh, basically single family. So low residential is basically single family. All of these zones, RE9, RS, R1, those are all basically single family zones. You can only have one one lot, one unit on those lots. Okay. Right. So we have this handout right here. This has a list of all the zones in the city. Some of these zones, like RE9, are really old lots that RS. RS that the city doesn't use anymore. So R1 is one house per lot. And if you look at the, the map with the yellow, that's the yellow. Um, and the, if, also, before we begin, I just want to talk about two concepts. So land use and zoning. Land use is a policy map, and it has a, a big range of categories. <laughs> Like the more the colors, low residential, low medium, medium. Yeah, so those are, and that's one that's one map that we're changing. But every time you change the bit, and also the zoning has to correspond within those categories. So that's what we're also doing the, the zoning. So we're changing the land use, the broad category, and also the specific zoning. 
the, um, the land use is a policy document, and then the zoning is an ordinance that has specific rules, like yards, setback, heights. So those are the two different, those are the two things that we're, that we're changing. Yeah. Sorry, what's this? Because I can, because there's only one space we're basically done, so let me just get, get and finish it, and then that way we can have it. So I'm going to just go through it. Um, so, and so we're going to have a conversation about all this. We have all these maps here, and so this is just to allow the conversation to keep going. So this is here, our zoning map. Um, so this map would correspond to that map that we just saw. These are these two maps that we have here. We'll be able to go through them. Um, and then this is just a, a detail, sort of blow up of the areas. Um, where we're talking about with a sort of a more intense use of zones. Um, Multi-family are these yellows, the light yellows are single family, this orange or brown, uh, multi-family, and then the pink is uh, commercial, and the uh, green is public facility. Um, and then down um, um, by the existing public park, we're, like we say, we're intending to maintain that as public facility so that we can maintain the park. Um, this is just, uh, I don't know, if we can go through some of the Caltrans. I think you guys would rather have us talk about the zone change that we're doing, but we can go through some of the, the Caltrans stuff. Doug? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so Caltrans, as you all know, uh, purchased these properties in anticipation of being able to build out <coughs> the 710 freeway. Um, the state has a, um, a surplus land act where when a public agency has land that they no longer need, which is the case that they have now uh, with the 710, um, the properties that they purchased, um, they now have an obligation to uh, to get rid of the properties. Um, and in this instance, there is the Roberti Act and also SB 51, which have established specific ways in which Caltrans has to dispose, that's a technical term, dispose of the properties. Um, they have to first try and find the uh, previous owner. If the previous owner um, is available, they could sell it to them. If the prior tenants or current tenants are in good standing, they can sell it to them. If none of those are available, then there are balls of progression of, I think it's a historic preservation organization, and then housing entities um, are sort of the cascading um, people who get uh, first right to turn down the property. <coughs> um, that's that. So, and as what well, we've been told, Caltrans has approximately 35 of the properties that they've sold out of their 300, uh, 250. Uh, and I think we're down. So, so um, I, we also want to um, point out that this project really started, it, it's, been a, it, it's been for decades. You know, the community has fought this for decades. And you guys want this initiative to not extend the 710 freeway. But I also wanted to highlight that there has been visioning exercises by consultants where we have talked to the community and we were using that study. I think that was done in 2021 to really inform our decisions. Um, and in terms of next steps, um, today uh, we do have a coming card. So if you have any specific comments, um, please let us know. And, uh, and if you have any concerns or if any input on what we're proposing, please let us know. And, uh, okay, all right. Excuse me? Um, the public hearing is going to be on Wednesday. We have a public hearing, and the public hearing is meant um, it's a requirement for the code where we hold a public hearing, we talk about the proposal, and we hear your comments. Like, so we look at this paper and you know what, it's great, or I have a specific comment on this specific block. So basically it's a, 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 uh, an event where you give us comments. Then it's gonna go to the State Planning Commission on April 11th, that's gonna schedule to, to go. Um, Felice, yes? Felice, you said this was in 2021 when you got feedback from the community. We were in the middle of the pandemic. Things were shut down. How did this meeting take place? Who was in your committee that gave feedback? When, how, if you could give more details. Actually, I wasn't part of that, but I know it was published in 2021. Um, I wish I could, I wish I had but, a study. I know, I know it was, um, it was uh, Kevin De Leon who sort of uh, spearheaded um, the, the organizing of the, of, and I think a lot of it had to do with, part of it was with Caltrans having to sell their properties, that the city had to essentially develop a plan to be able to say to Caltrans, we want to buy, you know, our, our housing departments needed to come up with a plan to, to buy properties from Caltrans. They want to sell it to our housing department if we didn't. And so that was part of the exercise was to be able to for our housing uh, department to understand what properties the city wanted to buy, 
one of the most valuable. And um, so that was part of the problem. That was part of the reason why it was uh, initiated in 2021. But it was Kevin De Leon who had it. He had. I, I, I read the report, and he says I think there were seven uh, citizens. 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 So but it's, 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 uh, actually, um, it was done during Zoom meetings. I just, I just heard that we're done during Zoom during the pandemic. Uh, but uh, the question is, okay, I think we're done. I think we're done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, we. Okay. Now, go ahead first. Oh, you mentioned that you have an opportunity, uh, and, and you're still seeking a particular company. Is there a chance that? So right now we're in the window that that, that could change this could happen. Yes. We're in that window we're collecting feedback. Um, April 11th is when City Planning Commission will make a recommendation to City Council. So it's important for the community to voice their opinion. Excuse me. No, excuse me. Folks, if you have a comment to make, please stand up because we have people that are having problems hearing. So when when it's your turn, please stand up. The lady in the back. Yeah. What, what you, well, when you said that the Maybe, city already uh, has You only have one minute, okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. When you already said that the city has plans to acquire these homes, do you mean the city already, as an HRE, has um, uh, access to these homes and are, has proposals to No, no, the develop? city, the Caltrain is selling the, 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 the Caltrain is selling their properties. Yes. So this waterfall system that they're reverting for ready access. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, and then there are some, there are some instances that the our housing uh, agencies have purchased some of those properties. We don't know we don't know what their plans are, um, but they purchased they purchased the properties. I think in some instances so they're just refurbishing, um, and just like uh, because they're single family homes, so they're just refurbishing and and um, you know maybe putting in like a an accessory dwelling or something. But they're not. Um, <coughs> but we don't know specifically what their their plans. We could find out. We do have, the city does have some leases that we're leasing mm -hmm. from Caltrans, and those are the areas with the parks. But my question is, does the city uh, plan, is that uh, an idea that they have to acquire more homes as um, the disposition of the homes become available? Yeah, 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 yeah. the city is still, the, the, so Caltrans has what, two, uh, 250 minus 35, whatever it was, so yeah. they've got over 200 properties that they're still selling. Uh, and, so. and so, two part, second part. Well, how, um, minute, the, the HREs, sorry, this is important. The HREs that already acquired some of the homes really? that are available? Excuse me. Ma'am, you, so, it's really crowded in here. I'll tell you what, I'll give you one more minute since you Thank want. you, yes. Okay, go ahead. These, this is the city council, sir. These, these, um, these HREs also have sir, proposals, or are they going to be, um, appointed already a, uh, zoning, um, Definition, or do they come with their own zoning? No, no, so we, yeah, so that's part of the part of the thing is that you know no one's gonna no one can purchase these properties if there's own PF, and so they, so they're coming with we're, we're establishing a PF zone or, or a R one zone, so that way whoever purchases it, it doesn't matter if it's, it's the city of Los Angeles, a, a neighbor, or someone else, it's got an R one zone or whatever the appropriate zone is that we establish through this process. So right. this comes first, then. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like we, we're not going to sell this little this lot here. It's all for R one, and then like this is developer said, so I want to yeah. do twenty units. Like no, it's not consistent. Right. It's just a one. It's an R one zone neighborhood. It's not consistent. So. So the developers have to, to conform with the zoning. Correct. Okay. Uh, well, you have a camera. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, some of us who were involved in stopping the freeway uh, were concerned, and I have talked with planning uh, about this after they presented at the neighborhood council uh, in March about having a, a larger community meeting where all these questions could get answered. And um, one of the things that's kind of confusing to me is when we talk about uh, this hearing that's going to happen Wednesday, and then after that, the Planning Commission on a April 11th. Um, my understanding is that there's going to be some more, another meeting or another opportunity for the community. And I think what I'm hearing from people is they want to know that if we have suggestions, they're going to be heard 
and active, you know, like the neighborhood council as well as the community are in this time. I'd, I'd like to know where it fits in that we're going to have uh, another meeting that, you know, and you were mentioning the park earlier. Uh, and I'm trying to help you guys get that going, you know. And I think it's really important that the community, we fought for this freeway not to go through for 60 years in this community. And we're not going to just run through the last leg of it like it's not that important. To us, it's very important. And so we want to make sure that we have robust community access and a voice. And so are we going to be able to make recommendations, for example, like the height? If we think in some places that it's out of character with the community, if we have issues with density, are you guys going to listen to us? If there's not enough infrastructure for parking and other things like that, are people, are, is this community going to get listened to? Mr. Garcia, okay. that's what you need to fill out that form. Okay. So right now, right now, the most influential is to get your comments in before the city planning commission. Um, it would be helpful more. if you have somebody so writing down the comments. Yeah, we'll, 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 I don't see anybody can, from your office. Can, can you go back one slide to the to the timeline? Because your timeline says that in winter 2024 there was a listen session and then. In spring, you're gonna have a share and consult session, and then you have a, it's hard to see because it's so, it's, it's a spring, uh, refine and finalize, and then summer, adopt, adopt session. What if this listen session happened in winter 2024? Because I don't think anybody so, is so, here. Right, so that was, uh, as Ulysses was pointing out earlier, that was, what we did was we took a lot of um, the um, information that was gained through the neighborhood study uh, the vision study. So that one meeting we had in 2021 or 2020 that was online, that's what you got all your information from? That's not, that, that's not where we got all of our information. Then we did our own research and we've, and we've spoken to some, some members of the community. So this is your first meeting with the community members right here, right now then? Second. Oh, second. Second. Well, the one online and this no, one. No, no, no. We had one. So let me hold on. Well, at the end, yeah, last week was there, two weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, and, besides and, that. So That's I do want to point out that the email we got and why you guys didn't know really about it last week, the email, and maybe we could pull it up, was not very informative, and we apologize. Like me as a vice president of Network Council, maybe we, I should have asked questions, right? So that's where it's a, a bit of my fault. We didn't know it was going to be this type of meeting. That's why we requested a different one. Um, we wanted another one where we were able to post, you know, and have the community here because... You know, and they, they heard me last last or last or week or two weeks ago, I live right across and I never got any of this. That's when we wanted to do another one. So I do apologize for that part. <clears throat> However, we didn't have a lot of information in the first meeting regardless. Um, so that's why we wanted to do this one where they were present again to us and this is our opportunity to ask and our questions. And to that, um, Thank you, we are also gonna be holding, we're still determining the dates and we'll let you guys know. We're gonna be doing some additional like um, informational sessions at the park. Um, we could come and talk to us about your proposals, give us some input. So but that'll be after today. the meeting's already been held at no, City before, Planning, though. Before, before, April before. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll determine it's going to be Saturday and then one in the evening. Excuse me. Tom, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Dr. Tom Williams, uh, been on the 710 for quite a while. Basic element is why is everything south of Alhambra Avenue eliminated? Because Caltrans extended to Valley, not to Alhambra. <coughs> yep. Has there been a special arrangement with Griffiths and others? Because at least a year, two years ago, there was a proposed multifamily dwelling element, at least on the east side of the below Alhambra parcel. So now, we're, where is it at? You're well, not extending to Valley, right. number one. Number two, what are you going to do with the industrial development that's already in the area just east of the playground? Is that going to be public facilities? Who's going to buy public facilities? Uh, is the city going to purchase that warehouse and parking lot? I don't think so. So it seems to be inadequate and incomplete. And might say I'll be submitting comments written uh, because you may get the F for litigation. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, there was 
sorry, sorry. I just, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, with, with regards to the um, the property down down here, we're not. Uh, you know, it, the the current use is not conforming. The 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 industrial use is currently not is not conforming use. Who owns it? Caltrans. I don't know. I don't know who owns. I don't know who. I don't know who the business is, but owns the property. Um, and so, and so, it's currently the use is currently not conforming. Caltrans has asked us actually to make it a, 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 a They've asked us to make it a, an M zone, but an industrial zone, so that it would match their use that's there, and it would sort of. And we said no, we're not. Doing it. Right. So we're not. It's so. Right. And so that's where we're leaving it. Up. What do you think that's right now? Okay, Tom, thank you. Thank you. Here's the form. Yes. Um, I just feel, I feel that being that this is the second in-person meeting and now we're in comments need to be submitted by Wednesday before that April 11th, having another community meeting in the park is not the location to be because there's a lot of, we need where everybody can, an open forum in an enclosed location and this is tight too. I think also with the time limits, I think it's the information that we do need but one minute when we're waiting for answers and valid questions, I think do we need to have that opportunity. Um, and I will be making a suggestion, but also with the suggestions that we make, how do we know what suggestions were or comments were presented and how are they being addressed? Or where will they be addressed is my question. So we will collect those comments. Mm -hmm. the staff, we're, gonna, we're gonna release a staff report. Um, in the staff report, we'll have a section on public comment where we summarize and synthesize all the information that we see and how to influence the plans going forward that are presented. But, and, and also, also if, you, if it's any, if any hard copy, so if you, if you fill out a form, we would scan that form and that form will be then, will be hard copy and so all of our commissioners will get every comment, you know, so we'll summarize for them, but they'll have each every day one, everyone's comment so they can go through and if they want, if they see a comment that they want to, you know, Right on it, then they, then they, then Besides they, these forms, how else can we submit comments? Uh, through email, to either Gatsali, Ulysses, or myself. you have the email posted somewhere? Excuse me, we've got to take one person at a time. Did you get yeah, follow up, though, will this two. presentation be shared? Yes. Okay. okay. Right. Where yeah. and where? Where? What platform? Where will it be shared? Well, you, are we going to email it. We can email it. And where will we be collecting emails today? Because I didn't have a sign-in. There wasn't a sign-in sheet today. Oh, is there a Wow. Oh. No. Okay, just, so we have a comment card. So. I understand, but I think um, there's a comment. I have comments, but also I think it's important that we have a sign in so that we can also know follow up of what's being done and said at every meeting, but also access to the presentations because the lighting That's issue right. does make it difficult to yeah. see, just like the gentleman pointed out. But I think it's important because we are um, not given, we're not allotted a whole lot of time, right? It's important to be able to have, be able to access this outside of this city. I will put some papers here so you can put awesome. your name Great. and Thank put you. your sign in sheets. I have like your your question. We decided to have it here because the lighting is better yeah. than at the senior center. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay. Yes. 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 So we they live right across the corner on Lowell, Allen, across where the house blew up. It's very hard to hear you. All the properties, whoever acquires them, are they going to be allowed once they're acquired and they built the single family home? Are the owners going to be able to create some type of business, like a day daycare center, or a flat house, or a transitional housing for the homeless? So, for me, that's important. And to please slow down the process. As a community, this needs to please slow down so we have better input that can, you know what we're getting into. What does uh, medium residential R3 mean? Hold on. Yeah, so it's hard to hear, but typically what's What's going to be allowing that zone is what's allowing that zone in the use. So along with density, for example, in the R1 zone, it's pretty limited. You're only allowed to have one house or like an ADU. Um, and maybe in some of the commercial zones, you can have different types of uses. So it just depends on the zone. We do have that cheat sheet that talks about different zoning, and typically that's what's only allowed is what's allowed in that zone. To speak to what he was saying, is transitional housing allowed in the R1 zone? No. That's okay. Oh, R3. R3 is a multi-family, and it's one house for every 800 square feet. So if you have a lot of 5,000, 
and you divide that by 800, that's how many units you're able to do, like an apartment. Six, six units. How six high? Units. What's the height? Uh, I believe that the, uh, our three is uh, 45 people. So four it's stories? Uh, four yeah. stories. Four stories? Could be four stories, yeah. I mean, but so, like, you know, so, as we were saying earlier, um, so, so, you know, this is, the, this brown here, these are all currently R, R3 already. So it's only these one, two, three, I think four properties up here that are R1. From the top? Yeah, from the top. From the top. From the top. From the top. From down. Yeah, so those three properties, three or four properties are currently R1. But the rest of the properties down that block are R3. And so, and those three or four properties already have like five units on them. And so they're already multi family properties. They're just zoned R1 because of and whatever. And the rest of them are R3. Because the rest of them are already R3. And so they would be 45 feet. It's a, it, that's what the zone allows. Right. <laughs> okay, it's going to work like this. The gentleman here in the front, the gentleman here, along with the previous cap, then you. And then you, next to you, then you. Okay? So, third one, stand up, go first. I got a lot of stuff here. So, I, I talk about it. So, you said you based a lot of your data off the neighborhood vision project that was pushed out in 2021, correct? Yeah, in terms of parks. Yes, so I remember being part of that. And in there, they mentioned the, the whole idea was increased density, converting garages to ADUs and making some houses to duplexes. And then they also even talked about permit parking, having to pay for parking, for public parking for your own house. Where did all that go? So that's the public parking, bigger than parking, that, that's, not, that's not planning, that would be like LADOT. So that's not land use. Um, but for example, right now it's your PF zone and all the R1 zones. The R1 zone does allow you to do an ADU and a junior ADU. The current zone doesn't allow you to do that. So in essence, we are allowing for more housing. So this is part of that neighborhood vision project to increase density. Yeah, we are. So you're zone. rezoning so they, they convert to ADUs. Yeah. And someone were two-story ADUs. Yeah, like that could happen. And the R1 locks, yeah. Yeah, so let's be transparent, OK? Yeah, because right, well, to your question, a PF zone doesn't allow housing. So essentially, yeah, it is an up zone. We're allowing housing in, in the zone now, but right now it doesn't allow housing. So what if it stays as is? A PF zone, not what happens. You can, you, you can well, add a bedroom. Like if you want to add a bedroom, if you want to add an ADU, you can do that. OK, what, I, what I'm saying, so what if it just stays? What happens? What if the community just wants that? Oh, the community, well, the community wants the PF zones to be maintained? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, that, I mean, that's what this process is about. I mean, so we're, we're only, all we do is we're recommending. We, we, we're recommending, we're taking your input, and, and yeah, we're taking what we think is the, the right approach. And, but the community may say through this process, it's one of the processes, that we want to see PF zones. I mean, so we've had one process where we've seen that the community wants to see some kind of single family zoning here. Yeah, but maybe through another process, we might have that problem. Was it? It was proposed by you guys. Oh, no, we, we were. I, I would have. But. We were on the committee and we okay. didn't agree. Oh, I, well, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. I, I don't mean to speak. I'm just telling you. No, no, I, I just, I just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not really, I'm sorry, I don't mean to speak for what the so committee said. There are, there are a lot of houses that you drive, they're vacant, right? Some of them right. are empty and they're going to dilapidate. So, yeah. we, I think we're going to have to make that decision. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So those are the things that we also need to think about. What about density of priority? Okay, gentlemen, gentle, so going back to the technical point of your presentation, Caltrans has already started a process of selling 250 properties right now. Does the rezoning that you're proposing make have any impact on the 250 that are already up for sale to the housing related? So if this rezone, however you want to, however it goes through, it could potentially take from the 250 or minus 35 that have already been sold. Because you can't go back on those sales already that have already happened. No, no, no. So I mean, so the so whoever I mean I don't know those transactions. Yeah, you know, but right. but but essentially whoever bought those properties from the Caltrans, assuming that they were down in the PF zones, mm -hmm. they bought a bunch of properties that are in PF zones. Right. At their own risk. So they may buy properties that if this zone change doesn't happen, they have properties that are PF zones and they can't build on them. And so you have you know these HREs that you know 
were trying to get in early and, and ended up getting a property that they thought was going to get zone changed, but it did. Um, and so, yeah, we're, so yes, we are, what we're doing here will sort of facilitate, you know, those types of actions. Follow up. Does this rezoning process then allow commercial developers to take over property and sell housing at a higher price? So, so then, yes, yeah, so there's actually uh, there's actually an interesting provision. Um, I don't know if that's if you want or if it's just in the general state law, but it basically says that if you're buying it from a public agency and you try and sell that property, you can you can make a certain amount of profit, you know, three percent or whatever it is, but you don't get to flip it and make your hundred percent profit on it. So thank you. Okay, the gentleman in the back. Uh, quick question. I see that I got here a little late, so I don't know what the colors mean exactly, but I do see on Stockbridge it's highlighted orange. Um, I do know, yeah, right, you guys pointed right in the middle. Um, there you go. That street right there is a combination of multi-unit uh, and single family. Yeah. But I do see everything's highlighted brown, which I'm assuming is you guys want to convert. Because you said mentioned yeah. over 5,000 would, would uh, a property, which most uh, lot, lot sizes are, are, are over 5,000 in that particular yeah. block. So there's a, there's a multi, like two, three, one. Correct. So you're proposing already one from pipe. One unit for every 1,500 feet. Repeat that, I'm sorry. One unit for every 1,500 feet, square feet. Okay, but that whole block is, is yeah. high. So the single family, they're yeah, proposing so to convert that? Yeah, yeah. So this, is, and it's, it's, this was actually probably one of our areas where we had some of the, you know, more tougher calls to make. Because, you, like you say, you've got single family um, and multifamily. The problem is if you, if you, if we go to an R1 zone and it's a multifamily property, we're, it's a non-conforming property. We just keep it in a non-conforming status. So all those, see, my, my question is, the single family are going to be converted into multi family? Right, there'll be an RD 1.5 until they'll- Because study. they have bigger, okay, so, and at this point also, to piggyback on his question is, this isn't an official or 100% fact yet. We still have- uh, Oh yeah, no, no, right. We still have a, a right to oppose this as a community. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And if we do, what do we, how, you guys need require what signatures, and if so, how many? So there's, so there's no there's no requirement. So you know, we're, what will happen on Wednesday? Or how do we stop this? Like, if we wanted to stop what you guys are proposing and pick what we want, right. what do we have to do? So I mean, the the, the the first line would be at the city planning commission. That's where you know you'll have you'll you'll have the strongest voice. We we're going to be taking a recommendation. We're going to be offering a recommendation to the city planning commission from the testimony that we get on Tuesday. And so we're just going to be putting a recommendation to the commission. But have they already made a decision no, already no, before? No, no, or no. they already had their mind set on what they're going to be doing? I mean, we don't know. I don't know. It's actually kind of a new commission. Like even if we do scream and shout, is there, does it matter at this point? Right. Or? It's a, I mean, so it's, it, it is, it's a new commission. So, um, and so I'm, I'm not familiar with the, with the commissioners. I would say go in there, say what your comments, right. and I've seen projects put on hold, being demoed, yeah. right. um, being denied. So mm -hmm. they're so you know, they hear what, what I mean, does it require me taking a day off of work to go yes. be there? Yeah. Or does it, it is, require yeah. a signature by all the community? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, does it require my whole family showing up to do that to take a day off? To say no? We're wrong with I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, so just say yes, it is hybrid. So you can call in. Um, so the, that the, the meeting on um, the city like, again. There's a lot of old people that live there that can use phones right, and right, stuff right, like that. It. Keep that in mind, or don't have Zoom. And I, what the idea is, if you cannot make it, you can submit comments via email. You can submit a public comment, and they like I said, there's a lot of older out. people that don't. So have you could organize, submit signatures, and look, look. This sentiment is all these people who signed it back it up. So you could. So I could walk at every house to get a signature, or at least ask, because I know they're not yeah, doing that for me. So I, if nobody's doing that, I mean, as a community member that lives there, then I'll go and do it. I'll, I'll take my time and, and get signatures. That, if you do that, that's what you guys need. So that's what I'm trying to ask. What do you need? And I'll do it. Yeah, you could do that. Just you have to submit it to the record. By when? Agenda, you could do that. By when? Um, I think it has to be within. I mean, so, the, so you know, we're, to get into our recommendation, well, our recommendation is going to be done um, at the beginning of uh, April 1st. So that's what our recommendations do. And so you would have, we'd have to see comments. You know, sometimes we're asking for comments before then, uh, but we take comments. You know, uh, we're not going to say that your comment came in on Friday and I don't work on the weekends. Your comment came in on Friday, and so I haven't tried to make it fit into the report. I mean, I'll door knock the neighborhood. Right, right, right. Try to get so you're going to get your so we'll get you ours. Uh, but then ultimately, uh, it'll be the, the city planning commission hearing. Where, you know, where they're going to be able to sort of listen to your comments or listen to your comments and, and you know, take action. Can you clarify can when is the, can, wait, I, I'm, I'm confused. When is the meeting, is, it, is there a meeting on Wednesday you said? Is there a meeting on Wednesday you said? 
there's a, there's a hearing on Wednesday. Hearing for what? For these comments? For this, for this, for this action. For, this for these action. comments then. So it's really due on Wednesday, all these comments, all these things that people need to uh, write no, in no. or email. No, no. Yeah, I mean, that's, just a, that's, a, that's a formal, as you listen to saying, that's our legal requirement to have a public hearing so that we can formally take input from the community in a, in a public forum. But if you want to give us letters, comments, call us, email us, however So ask again, what's Wednesday's meeting for at the planning, com at it's the planning for, commission? It's for us to be able to take testimony from the community to then formulate our recommendations. So Wednesday is really important that we, the people show it's up important, it's definitely important. Yes, and yes, 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 speak yes, what yes, they're yes, saying right yes, here, right now. Because yes, yes, this yes, is kind of like, there's no... Sign in sheet, right. there's no record of us meeting here right, right, by you right. guys because there's nothing here that says right. 50 people attended this meeting. You have no record of that because you have no sign in sheet. Right. Yeah. Wow. There is a sign in sheet. All right. There. Well, that we made, so, but not official. So third, go ahead. Just have a question on the timing here. Do you mind going back to the timeline really quick? Yeah. And my question associated with that timeline is uh, the adoption date that you're shooting for. Now, is that really more of a goal? Is that a stay? fast deadline is there a statutory requirement by which you have to do this that summer this is just our goal great so if that's the case then it seems to me like the most appropriate thing the fairest thing to do is to push back that goal right and then send the recommendation to council or to the commission that the recommendation is that the community would like to have more time to review to process to participate and we don't have a recommendation, our recommendation is to push back the timeline attack, whatever that might look like. That's what we recommend that you recommend. The second thing is related to historic districts. So immediately adjacent to the boundaries for what's proposed for changes for land use and zoning, you have the Berkshire Historic District that's immediately adjacent. I don't know the exact boundaries of what that is. It's going to be this hatched area here for me. Those okay, that's not on it. That's not on our handout here. Okay, so with respect to that, can you talk to talk to us a little bit about how that interrelates with the proposal and whether or not these these um, land uses and new zoning that you're proposing would then have to be subjected to those <coughs> so requirements? So the zoning is not going to change. Here. The zoning is going to stay R1 HPLZ. What we're changing is the land use. The land use is is, is designated as open space. So according to the land use, it's only only a part of it. So we're changing the land use to match the HPLZ and the R1 space. So, right. so it remains every main historic district. Every main district. Are there any considerations of considering any other properties in and around that area as historic, given the historic nature of what's happened with this project on the 710? Yeah, we're just keeping the HPLZ. We're not changing the zoning in those areas. We're just basically keeping the land use because right now it's open space and we're making it match to that zoning that's, that's already there, to the housing that's already there. Got it. So it's most, actually that, okay, all of those, yes. most of the properties north of Huntington, we're not changing the zoning. We're only changing the, the lots for a few. Currently this lot right here is on R4, and in the land use map, R4 doesn't exist in the plan. So we're just making it um, correspond to the land use. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, thank you. Um, I have the proposed zoning map, but where's the current zoning map? Is there another, is there another map? No. It's proposed, proposed. Like, I'd like to see what it's changing to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're actually, we're actually about to pull up the slides up. Before we pull up. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, general matter, anything south of Alton, Alton Park, is it going to be proposed? Yeah, so we're going to change the zoning from R1 to R2. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to change the zoning from R1 to R2. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to change the zoning from R1 to R2. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to change the zoning from R1 to R2. Okay. So we have, if we have the existing zoning map, all you see is PF for, from here all the way down. Okay. So. So the only areas where there's sort of like a zoning that's being changed other than PF is up here. And that's, what, and that's hopefully if this opens up, that's what we'll try and okay. show you. But I have uh, one more, a uh, couple more. Uh, what does RD 1.5 to dash 1 mean? So it's uh, residential uh, density. It's a, a multi-family zone. <coughs> it allows for one unit for every 1,500 square feet of your lot area. Okay, and then um, what? How does SB uh, Senate Bill SB nine and ten affect or not affect these properties where um, you said that people can't purchase and then flip, but can current owner or new owners then build uh, multiple units and demolish what's there and put four units in one spot? Like how that's SB nine and SB ten that allows. Everybody in the state of California to do that. 
So I'm just wondering if these properties are they too small to do that? What you know? How does that? Yeah, I mean, I'd have to look at the at the at the sort of technicalities that's behind. Essentially, we, it would, there would be nothing that would prohibit you from doing whatever the state allowed. So we would establish the R1 if the state allows you to do, you know, the 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 lot splits or the whatever the other one is. Um, you know, then that's what the R1 allows. Um, you know, if the if the community wants to establish additional rules or, or you know. But, but that's what we're, what we're proposing is an R1 to just keep it, you know, straight and forth. I think if it's historic, then those and are then, off Right, and then it's historic, right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I want to first propose that we do more outreach. I think this is very poor planning for this big uh, agenda or portfolio. Um, I, I do have information to your answer because I do have information that um, the city wants some of the properties to extend a program that they do have for transitional housing. And um, so that's not accurate. Um, um, also, yes, more outreach. And um, to your question, we need to definitely organize because the reason they're hushing everything now is because some of the homes already have been um, in the process of uh, being disposed. So an HRE, which is Habitat for Humanity, already has the homes. And they're about to do some outreach here to do exactly that. Developing and building. Um, but it seems like they're, you know, they're, um, it seems like their proposals are, are not going to be uh, fitted to this community. Before they develop anything, I feel that we should speak up and we should have more information. Just, uh, okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I totally agree with what she said. I think the outreach has been seriously poor. We found out about this meeting from a friend in Boyle Heights who knows that we're involved in this issue. I was part of the vision project, um, and yet I got no notification. Um, so, Thank you for that. It should be held someplace where we can do significant outreach to the adjacent community, everyone that's affected by it, and um, maybe have it someplace like a school having it at the park. We can't hear that. So we have meetings there often, and it's hard to hear. So maybe at a school or someplace else. Anyway, uh, back to the, the vision project was three years ago. And so uh, the some of the results of that were that we maintain the correct character of the community. Um, there was a serious uh, issue with parking already. The existing driveways are all too not wide enough for the current vehicles that, that people have uh, was one thing. And, and making the, the, more, the properties more dense is going to create a huge problem for our community. Um, and then another, my, my question is, is there a zoning code that could um, prohibit a, a single family from adding any height. I know if you had a second story, you probably have to get a variance, but now you're saying that an ABU doesn't have that. I know they've loosened some restrictions on the ABU, so how does that work, and is there some sort of an alternative to that? So there's a zoning cheat sheet that I have. So the zone has R4 is the how much density, and then the dash one, that's the height to So the second portion, so if you look at your cheat sheet that I, that I passed out, um, the use are highlighted in yellow, and then you kind of have to go to the last page to figure out the height. So, um, Can you have that? I think we need a no whole meeting just on this because we're not contractors here. So, so essentially, it's, 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 it's the zoning already has height rules. Okay. All right. So, I mean, I can see how this rezoning benefits homeowners. I mean, my question also is are these um, the ones that are zoned for public? Is that just the Caltrans home or is it all of our homes? Because you have the whole thing highlighted, right. so. <clears throat> so this so this here is the current is the current existing uh, zoning. Mm -hmm. So all the pink, all the uh, green is PF zone. So Caltrans may own the property, but it may also be owned by uh, private uh well, entity. My house is in that. Right, right. So, so right, so then you own it. So your your property is zoned PF, but you're a private property right. owner. But but Caltrans owns some other. If I look it up, say on one of the uh, real estate. 
Yeah, I have a real estate friend who all ask me that stuff, and I say that doesn't mean anything to me because it's not illegal. It's just a, it's just that's that's a real estate thing that they just L A R one really doesn't mean anything here. It's not, yeah. So it's a the, the, the zone is 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 the and so the the, 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 you know, the intent is L A R one, but that's not what the zone allows. That's what we're and that's what we're trying to establish is. Is L A R one? Can I sue somebody for not disclosing that when they bought my house? <laughs> okay, it's going to work like this. Yoli here next. The gentleman with the black hat here. <laughs> then Hugo, and then your lady in the blue. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Nani. Yeah. So, um, recommendations, just like others have expressed, just slow this down. I mean, I don't know why it's being expedited. Uh, community definitely not everybody's been aware and definitely not liking a lot of the stuff that we're hearing so slow it down um, give us time to process it's hard to make a single series on Wednesday um, make sure if there's other ways to get input besides in writing um, give us that time also um, part of the the east uh, northeast plan is residential the characteristics of a vanilla plan is single residential homes we want to keep that, follow that plan. Um, you know, as I hear my neighbors talking about it, I do remember now joining that Zoom meeting and what was, it was not really, I was giving feedback, it was a presentation of what they were proposing to do, yeah. okay? And our recommendation, I don't see it reflected on these proposals. I don't remember any community member here wanting 75, 70 feet buildings. Okay, um, so my other recommendation is keep it R1. Um, you, you're saying right now it's zoned, you know, public, um, public you know, um, facility, but obviously we know that there's homes there. So when there's a home, people are what? Okay. Um, the commercial buildings. Okay. If you want to keep it commercial, keep it commercial, but put the high limits. Okay. We don't want anything high. Keep it low, as low as possible. Um, if there's bungalows there, I mean, keep the heights. We don't want to change our, our neighborhood. We like it the way it is. We understand there's a housing crisis. There's a lot of properties there, okay? Now with the ordinances that are in place, they could do additional units. We don't need to change it from R1 to increase the density here. So our recommendation is keep it residential. We don't want buildings that are high, so limit the restrictions. So you're, you're right, all this yellow, it's what we're proposing, yeah. and that's that's one that's one house. That's a lot. right, but of the other ones too, like we want if right oh, now so we don't have high buildings. Okay. I want you know adjust the heights. We don't want to make it that high, okay? So that's the heights. I know a community here likes it the way it is. We like the character of our community, okay? Um, and then my um, the last thing I wanted to share also is that um, the meeting is being recorded and it's through the Encerrano Historical Society. So it's gonna be posted on the Encerrano Historical Society um, YouTube channel. Um, you know, so just for anybody who wants to um, listen to it. And um, yeah, slow it down and give us more time for input. Thank you. Yeah. So I just wanted to... Um, uh, can we do the live? Yeah. So I just wanted to... Um, yeah, because it is, it is kind of a big area. Uh, the, the, the geography, and you know, this was actually an exercise that we did a couple weeks ago, and it kind of, it kind of brings the project, at least in my mind, a little bit to scale. So if you if you were all the all the green that you see here is all what is PF zone, and so if you remove that, because we're just literally saying that's PF zone, something has to happen. Everything on that property is illegal. All those properties are illegal, basically, and so we're gonna have to do something with the PF zone. So now let's just focus. For now, on what we're doing outside of the PF zones, and then again, this is the existing zoning that you see up there. <coughs> what do you mean by illegal? I'm sorry. It, what do you mean by by legal? You're saying it's illegal. What is it's, it? it's a it's a it's a non-conforming. It's a non-conforming. It just doesn't have a. Uh, it doesn't have it. It, it doesn't it's have not, a zoning. It's just it's unzoned, right? Exactly. Residential right. and not allowed in the PF right. zone. So all that green right now, just we're just a right now it has no zoning right now. All this gray right, basically okay. is right, is is currently right now we're right. not zoned for anything. Yeah, right. And so, and then, and so, then you go, you know. So now we're looking at this area above. <clears throat> so these are the only properties that we're actually changing for the areas that are north of Huntington. <clears throat> so as, as so, if you, so if you want, so we, we're not 
you know, aside from the PF zones, right. everything down, aside from all the PF zones down here. What is no, the edge of that, of that uh, tree where it starts from and where, where does it end? Where? Uh, on, the, on the left side. On the left side. This is, this is still well. So it's low well. So low I live low. on low on Almond, yeah. guys, and it's literally low on Almond and on, which is this is why I'm annoyed <laughs> because that's my home. Like I, I'm right in the front, and I got no reach, no outreach. So they they know that because I spoke my mind last time. So that's the area from low on Almond going up to Maycris, that whole corridor, that area. So that's where they're saying that all of them or most of them minus three or four are R three, but that's where we only have three apartment complexes. So that's that's where I'm a little confused because they're telling us one thing, but if we walk our community, our community, we are seeing another thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, this is epic. So this is our, oh, sorry. So this is our one zone up there right now, but it has got five unit apartment buildings on it. Okay, circle. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so it's our zone right now. It's not a P zone. These, these, right, these properties basically. Wait, I go back one. What you guys are proposing to do one all, all, so. Yeah, so everything down here, everything in the gray is P zone, PF. Okay. So we're, the only areas that are, are where there's an existing zoning that's actually functional is up here. And so then the only, oh, the only zones or only properties up here that we're then changing and you guys are, proposing are the main the R1 to 1.5 small lot development? Uh, so it would be, this is the R1, so this would be R3, because this is all R3 down here. Okay. So this, this is that's really decent to residential territory. Yeah, these are, this is, I think, a five unit building, apartment building right here right now. And so I don't think the R3 actually doesn't actually create additional density. It would just allow that, that, that five unit density to, to exist as is, but it wouldn't really allow you to build on that. Um, R3 is one for 800, a 5,000 square foot lot gives you. <laughs> Six units, you know, um, you know, so you get so you get six units out of out of the, in the R in the R three, and again, there are, some of them are already five units, and it's already R three all up and down. But those are one of the but that's this is why I want to play it out to you guys. These are the areas where again outside the PM zone. These are the areas where we're doing some change. So up there at the very top is um, we're going OS for the open space. Um, these guys here are R three, and they're going down to an R B one point five. Um, so. Yeah, they'll still have a consistent um, and still consistent density, but those ones are going down, are being down from R3 to R2. I feel like the things in the gray zone, it's important for oh, oh yeah. neighborhoods to have an established zone. Right. Oh yeah. Because it, is effect, it, it does affect the property value. So right. it's not being able to have any kind of conversion or you know, resell value on top of that, even though they're under the impression that it is uh, R1 zone. Right. 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 And that was all that, was, that, was that exercise was just to show we're not, really not doing that much up here. Yeah. Yeah. This is the zoning that exists that is is functional and pretty much we're leaving that as is. And you get into the PF zones where either we don't do anything and we leave everyone sort of you know where we are today, or we right now they can if, if a homeowner wants to go and permits to live in that zone right now, it will be denied by the city. Well, thank you. I think she did. Well, actually, I just looked at it on Zemos, and my house is R1. Oh, you are R1. Okay, so then you're outside of that. So then you should be outside of that. Okay. Before we go on. I don't want any rezoning of my house. Excuse me, before we go on, where's the sign up you guys? Who has the sign up People are still requesting the sign Okay. Go ahead. So. Are the sales of the properties contributing to the results? No, we don't know anything about the sales. So, so people right now that are buying the house, they're buying whatever, whatever's going to be. Right, I mean, so I did, well, I did die. So I do have, um, I did get, um, I did, we do know some of them. Some of the properties may already be up here. And so in which case, they may be already properly zoned. Yeah, so, you know, some of the 30 that they may have bought. There are some that I know that are down here that they bought, and so those people bought them. Yeah. 
any, any quarrel on uh, what, what's being done there. So. As long as it's like you, you bet the Arizona zone is our one, you can build whatever is allowed the R1. Yeah, if you want to build beyond that, then we can Okay, so you know what, I just wanted to say that uh, to, to let people know, like people are asking waves at City Planning Commission meeting on April 11th. It's going to be at 8.30 at City Hall. In, it's not up there, but it's in room 340, which is on the third floor. So people have to be there at 8.30 in the morning to give a comment. Um, one of the other things I wanted to say with some of the other things that have been said, including, you know, some of us that were on that uh, committee, I quit because I didn't agree. The first meeting with the Landing or Los Angeles Neighborhood Initiative that was brought in to, to work that, that project, they said they wanted to increase density. That was the first thing where, where it's done. And then uh, we all said, Where, where'd you get that? That's not coming from the community. And so there was a lot of things that we questioned. The infrastructure. Is there infrastructure for this kind of development? Is our community going to be able to absorb it? So, a lot of us didn't agree with some of the stuff that's coming out. I don't blame planning. They're going with what they were given. So it, I don't think it's their fault. But I do want to say I would think that some of us, that we should stay here after, even if it's just for 15 minutes, to share a little bit of information. And maybe we can get a petition going and turn it in on what the community feels. And I also agree that we should not have the meeting in the park. And I suggested to this group here to have it at the Christian Church, maybe, mm -hmm. on Eastern Avenue, where it's really big and there's parking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we let we make it so that, and we put it out throughout El Sereno, because the 710, this is like the culmination of the 710 issue. And that was a 60-year struggle that we had in our community, the longest struggle in the nation. A lot of people don't know that. We won that battle the only time in the east side we stopped the freeway. Now we're not going to let it play out just like whatever. And again, I don't blame planning, but we need to take control. We can see here that the sentiment is probably unified, probably 90%, that we don't want density, we want single family rent. This wouldn't happen in Beverly Hills, it wouldn't happen in Brentwood, any, you know, all these places. We need to defend our community. So I say, why don't we stay here a little bit after, exchange some information, let's get a petition going and turn it in. You know, but let's have a meeting in, in a place where we can have tables with maps and the community can weigh in and understand everything. Okay, if you want to do what was said, you have to do it outside the library because they close promptly at 7.45. You got to be out of here. Uh, Lady in the Blue, you. <coughs> Lady in the Blue, Jenny Burr. Right. Okay, um, so we were part of that steering debate. Um, and like you said, like I'm echoing everything that, that Hugo mentioned, that we all kind of went through. We didn't even get the notification or invitation for this meeting. We didn't know that it was occurring. I saw it on Facebook. They had missed that. People, they were really close to there. Um, but we do really have also Spanish translation available because a lot of our community is not here. And because it's not available in Spanish. So they need to have access information. This is deeply, deeply important to them as well. Um, the things that we were recommending aren't in here. I'm, you know, I pulled up the, the plan and everything that was submitted to the city, and our recommendations aren't, aren't in here. You, know? you guys are saying what you guys um, wanted to present, and a tidbit of like, okay, but not to the grain of what our concerns were with the density, with the parking, with, um, with the bringing in two to three lots together that are vacant. So that all of a sudden those can be, you know, up zone because now you have the square footage to build that 70 foot or whatever it is mm -hmm. that you just want. What I'm not seeing on here, um, I see on the back but not in here as it as a comparison is the R1. As just an R1. I see the R1.5, but I don't see just the R1. There may be one, but I don't see it. <laughs> um, I don't see it. I see the 1.5. I see this kind of thing in the back, but not oh, the on the inside. Yeah where we can do the comparison work, because I want to see what the high comparison is with the R1 footprint. Are you guys proposing to combine lots? No, we're not doing no, lot right? types, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're planning on combine lots. Well, I think the 1.5 is the okay, we, we, we want to see what they can do with what yeah. they actually have. So, um, with the sales, so I'm in one of the South and South. We got the, the notice, so now we have to send off all of our financial information to see if we qualify. But that rezoning that you're proposing is going to happen. Most likely happen, it's very time sensitive, 
It's just, it's really upsetting because, and again, I, I, at this point, it doesn't matter if you guys like me or not, because I'm trying to be nice and respectful, but like, you want to hear the comments, but you won't hear them or write them down until we go to this meeting on Wednesday. Cool. I'll take time. I'll leave work early. Not a problem. I was late today. I apologize for that. Because I have work. This is your job. You're getting paid to do this. But I don't see a single one of you taking notes. Yeah, that's and I know you only want to take comments on this Wednesday or whatever meeting, and I understand that because you're doing your job, but it's not fair to us. Because some of us have the pink zone which we don't like, right? So, but do I see any, or brown, whatever color you put on the top right, I already told you where I live. So, it's just upsetting that you guys want to hear our comments, but even today, today's meeting seems like it's, and excuse my language, bullshit, because you guys are not taking our notes. You guys are not yeah, taking our comments. We, we and, and you want us to write it down? Cool, some okay, of us will write it down, but it's just not fair. Okay, I bet Ernesto, forgive me. But my understanding was this was an informational meeting only, not a, not a rally, not a town meeting. You've been, what they have told you is these properties are currently zoned PF. Due to laws governing this situation we're in, they intend on zoning them pretty much the way they were zoned before. So all the drama, all this, well, let's get out our torches and pitchforks, that's unnecessary. Thank you for your presentation, it was thorough, it was complete. You've been given their email addresses. You've been invited to submit comments through email. They have heard everything that has been said. Okay, hold on, hold on for a second. And I agree with Mr. Guerrero because I was going to tell, I was telling my wife, during the pandemic, we received that pamphlet in the community requesting, hey, what are your ideas? Look, we I'm not here to argue. They're not here to argue. Nothing. This is not a, <coughs> this this house, is not a house meeting, meeting that is open for three discussion. generations in our family. Yes, it is. I don't want, I don't want no, that house to be so, This is an information story, multi-family building next to me. When I walk out my front door, I see single-story uh, family homes. I love the view. I love my neighbors. Well, Bruce, well, Bruce, you okay. say information on meeting, but they're here to take information for Wednesday. Excuse me, wait. The gentleman's been standing. That makes no sense. Sir, go ahead. I've been asking the question. Question during the meeting. Maybe I missed it. But he proposed since my parents are homeowners across the street. All the adjacent properties that he proposed, he probably can't answer it, but if there was 
say a real estate actuary. It, are my parents, their home, their property value, is it gonna go up or down with this proposal? Down. Less parking, more people. All, all, all I can say is that your, your, your parents may have a, pro a neighboring property that is doesn't can't be built upon, and so whoever owns that property can't do any additions, can't improve it, can't maintain it in any way, and so you know that may or may not be a value to the neighborhood. Okay. Okay, gentlemen with the LA cap, the gentleman with the LA Dodger cap, please. Go ahead. Thank you, Matt. But what, like I was saying earlier. That pamphlet that I remember getting it in the mail during the pandemic, which I'm sure most of us were all at home, right? And the state of California, logo on it, and the city of LA. Put our comments, checked off whatever options they had given us, and then added some additional information at the bottom. I don't know how many of you got it. Did anybody get it? Right? Submitted, I haven't heard nothing. This meeting tonight, my wife, got some email or something, I said, well, let's go, because I haven't heard about any of these other meetings that have been happening. So there's I think a reason. There's, there's a reason you guys are speeding up the process after 40 right. years of nothing, right. no, not even Kevin de Leo, not even Marilena Durazo did anything. All the homes were dilapidating as you stated. Correct. Excuse me. I got to get, stay on the list. Okay, are you finished? I want to give the rest of my no, mentor. I, I, have, I have a question. <laughs> okay, go ahead, sir. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to echo what I'm hearing. Low density, low density. Library, City Hall, City Hall, uh, police station, fire station, fire station. Fire station. Fire station. Yeah, that's the only thing that's allowed in the zone. Oh, a dam, a dam, probably. Like freeway, yeah, freeway, freeways, yeah. freeways are very <laughs> <fireable. laughs> <laughs> 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 So, are you going to demo for that? No, no, no. Just no. Lots, no, no. It's just, it's just the rezoning of the of the property. So the property now has a PF. It'll get an R1 if it's whatever is done. For the most part, it'll get an R1, and so you know. Whoever owns that property can, you know, live in it as is, or they can add on to it, or they could put whatever it is that the R1 allows. But we would be doing a physical action. Well, can you tell me those if they're not purchased? Because I know a lot of these are now moving forward, purchased as the number of people here requiring them. But will there be any demo there to put it? Or the we're, we're not proposing a specific project. Whoever buys it, they could, they could, they could yeah. Um, any little pocket parks that might be on the radar too, or like little yeah. maybe dog parks? No, not big some of them. This one yeah. and this no, right here. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Right. There's a lot of empty little lots there too. There's a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those are um, those ones were were owned by Caltrans, um, and yeah, I think. Caltrans is going to be is going to be selling them to you know individual. I know Caltrans is, has you know they didn't want us to go open space up here and they wanted this to be you know multifamily and they wanted this to be multifamily down here because because they want to be able to sell the properties but those aren't assets to the community so they not we didn't want them to become you know anything other than what they currently are. Single family, single family parks, right? Single family parks, community gardens, yeah. But yes, there, there are some areas where there's, you know, there's, yeah. Okay, uh, at this time, I'm going to call on Francis. Do you have a, I already have a question. From what I understand, these seven families, they were all R1, a couple open space, and a couple from the closest. Now, if I can just see you. Doctor, you're going to see Why don't you simply go back to all the I was or what they were pre-7 We're not 100% sure of that question. I know most of it was R1, but if you look at the building permits, there are some triplex, some five, three, there's some larger, a larger apartments. So in the back, back in the day, we wouldn't allow an apartment in R1 zone. So it was some sort of multifamily to allow that. So, so leave those as kids and all the rest back to what they were. That's exactly what we're doing. Right, like, like, like right here. There's, 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 there's this large sort of uh, Spanish style um, apartment building, right along Shelly right there. And that's, yeah, 
that needs to be a multi that that's all that the city wants, that's all the community wants. So we, we want to maintain that existing density and allow that, that building those uses. There are, there, there's, uh, there's three, I think there's three sites in, there were three, this, this parcel here, I think was identified in like a survey LA as being historic, was it the bungalows? Um, and there's, I, there's, so that means, I gotta keep a list because we're gonna run out. No. It should be though, but it should be. What was the question? Fernando, go ahead. I have a couple of questions. The areas that are R3, are those owned by Caltrans currently? And are those apartment buildings vacant right now? Uh, I, I could tell you for certain. I think some of them are owned by Calpins. I know some of them are owned by Calpins. Um, some of them are not. And, um, but I don't know the vacancy. Okay. And then, at any point, like in the timeline, is Caltrans going to be a part of any of the hearings to know like what the sale transactions are and what the plans are? I'm assuming that like for the R3, whoever purchases it, then they'll have the discretion to do what they want with that lot. Um, and so that would be my only concern in terms of like the transparency here. And I understand that Connie and I have not been like the transactions of that, but I think it would put a lot of the community at ease knowing what how trans and those Purchasing look like. Um, is there a possibility to involve Caltrans in any of these meetings or connect the community with the person that's like in charge of that? There was another comment very similar to that, so we'll consider it. If we have a, another one, that's something that we would be considering. It might have to but, but we can't control if they come or not, but that's a really good idea. Okay. Yeah, I just have one question. So I heard paper 11 is the commission meeting, but then I keep hearing Wednesday meeting, Wednesday meeting. Did you share that information about when is this Wednesday meeting? Uh, uh, Location, yes. time, place? It's virtual. It's virtual? So we do have a website. Um, our, one thing before, please visit our city planning website. We have a tab just dedicated for this. We have a sign-in page. So please go in there and put in your name, your email, so when we give you updates, you can stay informed. So Wednesday um, meeting is... Virtual? Yes, this coming Wednesday is virtual. Let me just look. The information session, kind of what we just did, is going to be at 5.30, and the public hearing will be in at 6. But where's the link at? This public hearing notice is in our website. It would have been nice to have like the... So, uh, first question on the PM zone, you can find the gray area. Um, is, is that the same if, let's say, if you were in South Pasadena or Pasadena, do you still call it? What are they showing us? So, actually, what, uh, so what, actually what happened, and this is part of the reason why the, the, what I was talking about the Lani study and, and the purchasing, one of the requirements, and I, I don't want to get too much into it because it's Caltrans state level legislation that I'm not 100%. Right. But essentially, South Pasadena came up with a plan and they said to the to Caltrans, Sierra, this is our plan. We want, I think it's 30 acres. And they bought 30 acres of land. And and so South Pasadena just owns 30 acres of land now. That was Caltrans property. Because they just came up with a plan, they said, you know, and, and, and the, legislature, the legislation was such that, you know, I guess if a public entity, you know, a city comes up with a plan and says, this is what we want with this property that's in our city, that Caltrans will dispose of it. And so that's part of the reason why what that lobbying process was about. It was focused on Caltrans properties. It wasn't necessarily focused on, at least, at least, sorry, at least the report that we read <laughs> um, was, was, was focused on just Caltrans properties. And so, you know, whether or not, um, you know, uh, sorry, lost my train of thought there. Uh, whether or not you know Caltrans, um, <coughs> you know, is able to. Right. Sorry, lost my train of thought. Well, I guess my question is yeah. in regards to rezoning, right? Is Cal Lake City rezoning yes. Cal Lake? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be cool to Pasadena and South Pass to rezone as well? Because they oh, that's what they have. That's right. Yeah, that's what right. I think they have. That's what right. I think it's part of there. What they said was, look. Uh, Caltrans, we've rezoned all of our properties. We have a plan for 30 acres, and we've rezoned, and that's what, and so that's why the city was able to sell them the property because the, because South Pasadena said, here's our affordable housing program that we're going to do for all the housing, and all, and that met all the goals of the of the state legislation. And so I think that's what the city was trying to do. Um, we just felt we're not as small, small as 
Stop that. Yeah, they can. It's way easier for a small initiative. It's easier, right? So, but. Okay, but then. Two ways. Just go ahead. So, my neighborhood is up in the area that you get at. And so, I'm just a little confused where it's Lowell um, going down to Lowell-Tonia, where it's like Queen who comes to R3, the brown block. Oh, yeah, okay. No, 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 the other side, oh. the, the other block. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's our. So, I'm, I'm a bit confused because there are some tables down in Lowell there. Right. You know, when you want to get a neighborhood, they're not all R3. Right. Like right now, they would be considered R1. So, what, is there a possibility for them to remain R1? Wait. The one that's yeah, exactly. So it's not just I mean, we just yeah, we look at these sort of back landings have a yeah. R three multifamily yeah. zone yeah. here, yeah. you know, the multifamily fifty unit apartment building, and then R one right next to it, and then right next to them another multifamily, and so <laughs> right, and so and it's currently R three also. So it's currently a zone R three from here. So for for the most part, these properties on low are a zone R three. It's just the top four properties that are currently up to zone R1, and those are, two of them are uh, five unit uh, apartment buildings. I, I'm very okay, right. <laughs> and, so, and, so, and so while we're, we're zoning them R3, they're not going to really increase density because they, they would get six units, so they could put. Right. Like, I understand those. Okay. My, my question is the ones that are. Those are already zone R3. <laughs> they're already zone R3. Right, right. 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 So they're so, already zone R3. We're not going to down zone, so, right. yeah. Those are already. It's yeah. not the city planning. Okay, but there's a there's a concept of spot zoning. The reason we don't have to do like block by block is because we want to make sure like the whole block is cohesive. So we don't we're not gonna spot zone. That's not the same. I mean, it was weird, it was weird when we saw that when we saw these this R three and usually you'll see maybe sometimes you'll see it like um you know a transitional will be a single family R one and then an R D yeah you know, that's kind of a little bit more but this is R three is a pretty intense uh, multi family so then you see the R one you know tagging along on the top of it was kind of. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Uh, folks, because of short time, this will yeah. be the last question. Thank you. Yes. Um, I have a question to um, your question. Why will Caltrans position be here in the zoning or rezoning? Because um, from what I understand, they are disposing of the properties, meaning that the HRE would be able to do whatever they want as according to the rezoning that is proposed here. I do have information that the HRE that has um, uh, that has gotten some of the homes is um, doing an outreach on the 21st here in Barrio Action, and the same, they're planning to develop some homes um, as supposed to be as the affordable housing, but it's not affordable to like a lot of the community here. So we need to also tap into that because. They um, basically, I I know that Hakla, along with the city, has gotten some of the homes too, and this is also why they're speeding up the process of rezoning. Because to me, it sounds like gentrification. Like it sounds like a lot of people are eyeing all of these properties and have you know um, interest in developing, but nobody's coming to the community. Like nobody knows uh, any HREs. Like we have an HRE here um, that also bid for the homes in its incidental community land trust that wants to be involved with the community, not like outsiders or you know people who are not attending any of the meetings or inquiring about our needs. That's all I have. Okay, folks, uh, we're going to wrap it up now. Thank you all for coming. In behalf of Valley 32 Neighborhood Council, this is our second meeting. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The sign in sheets are comments. I would gladly take those. Okay. I thank you for coming. Okay. Okay. If you haven't signed that sign in sheet, please. And it's going to be recorded, right? So I could. It's going to be recorded, so I can reach out to you.